Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Rainbow Six Siege. If you enjoy this video, please study to become a dentist and then remove all of your patient's teeth and say that you'll only put them back in their mouth if they subscribe to Modest Pelican, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Welcome to Rainbow Six Siege, one of the few games where camping is socially acceptable. In fact, it's more than socially acceptable, it's bloody encouraged. Sitting in a corner on your ass, watching the same line of sight for two and a half minutes is apparent a highly calculated tactical maneuver. Now I'm no pro at Siege, in fact I'm a dirty little noob. I'm only rank 20 which is the equivalent of being the water boy for an under 12's chess team. But it's okay to be a noob in Siege as everyone is super supportive of new players and understanding that they might take a little bit of extra time to learn how the game works. I'm just kidding, everyone is a bunch of toxic f***ing dicks. My team once voted to kick me out because I made them wait like 5 extra seconds as I changed my opera. Another time the round had only just started and this puta started shooting me for no reason at all. Now I'm not the kind of guy to turn the other cheek and so I pulled out my handgun and I shot the sook. Who does he think I am? F***ing Gandhi? You shoot me, I kill you. I decided to ensure that there'd be no open casket funeral for his family and defiled his corpse a little. And then sure, I dropped a couple of tea bags on him like the teacup he is, but then Potato Gamer 87 straight up team kills me. Fuck you, Potato Gamer 87. <laughs> you. But no, look, petty team killing aside, there's plenty of legends in the game and I've actually been so addicted to it, it's so fun. I love how I always start playing games several years after they release. If you haven't played Siege, basically one team starts outside and attacks a building, maybe to defuse a bomb or engage in some light bondage. The other team starts inside the building and has to defend it. Everyone has one life per round, a huge ego, and you can win by either killing the entire opposing team or via the objective. Think search and destroy or counter strike. The thing that really spices the game up is all the different operators you can choose from. They started off all serious, you know, with your classic special op team style, black balaclavas under tactical helmets, dudes with beanies and beards, eye patches and hipster Asians. Wait, Wait, what? I guess the game's been out for like four years now and so they just decided to hit the YOLO button. Like it seems they're taking anyone into battle these days. One match I had a MILF on my team and she didn't even bother throwing on a pair of combat pants, she just came straight from her Sunday morning spin class in Laura Jane leggings. Should I wear my ballistic armor today bro? Or do you think today is the day I should premiere my pink leopard print pig costume? Honestly a smart play from Ubisoft dipping into the furry market. It doesn't stop there though, you can choose to be a young Hitler, a League of Legends MLG virgin, a Chernobyl nuclear engineer, or even Australian icon Ned Kelly. Imagine if you had been captured by terrorists and the special ops team sent to save you was made up of these fruitcakes. The important thing is that each of these operators has special loadouts. For example, my favourite character has always been Twitch. She has this little drone thing that can go around and shock people and destroy traps. I mentioned this gadget in my last Siege video, but I guess when you're young at heart, you enjoy the little things in life. Like repeatedly annoying and shocking this guy, damaging him 10 health points at a time. Great banter. Anyway, the only thing these impressive operators can't seem to do is fall seemingly small distances. Like I tried to jump down a ledge that I swear my 5 year old nephew could have parkoured down with a cheeky tactical drop and roll, but no, my operator breaks both his legs and is apparently a hemophiliac too and bleeds out. The only thing more dangerous than ledges in this game is the Australian map. Like if you're on the attacking team, the best thing you can do is get inside the building ASAP as engaging in a lethal firefight is safer than spending another minute out here in the Aussie desert, unless you know, being molested by a mob of kangaroos is your idea of a good sex life. Alright, you know that I don't like to get serious on this channel, but while I was streaming this game on Twitch, we had a bit of a social breakthrough I guess you would say. So this young young lad came to me for advice, as he had messaged a girl and she had seen his text message but had not replied, and it had been several hours so he wasn't sure what to do. Now for situations like this, I have a cute little life hack that works 100% of the time. It's basically a get out of jail free card for really any scenario. Send a dick pic. If the girl of your dreams is not responding to your messages, send a dick pic. If you can't be bothered going to work and don't know what to tell your boss, send a dick pic. 
Did you forget a friend's birthday? Well then print out a dick pic, put it in a card with a nice message and give that aging motherfucker a birthday they won't soon forget. There is literally no problem that can't be solved by whipping your phone out and snapping a quick photo of your junk. So yeah, you're welcome and please use your newfound power for good and not evil. And if you're wondering what happened to the young lad who came to me for advice, well he and that girl are now married with six kids living in a beautiful home on the coast of Sicily. So yeah, dick pics really can make your wildest dreams come true. Oh, and if you're part of the 4.2% of my audience that are female, your nudes are like dick pics on steroids. Back to Siege though, and let's talk about kill cams for a second, which are basically the best way to flex your skills to the entire lobby. At the end of each round, the final kill will be replayed and having your name up on the screen is like saying to the entire enemy team, hey there. I am your daddy now, bitches. You do not want to be the one being killed in the final kill cam though, especially if you're doing something newbie. Or you can be sure some angry kid on your team will project their deeply disturbed internal emotions onto you, but yep, you guessed it, voting to kick you from the match. Like goddamn son, I'm sorry I didn't pull off a 1v6 clutch. Your expectations of my skill level are more unreasonable than Chinese parents. Better than a kill cam though is being the MVP of the match. Standing up there right in the center, basking in your amazing skills, and for a brief second you forget the troubles of the real world and can just enjoy your moment. You are the king of the nerds. And then you remember that you have to do the laundry and cook dinner, and you should probably hit the gym more than you currently do, and you could even be getting a little bit dehydrated but can't be bothered getting yourself a glass of water as you're a lazy piece of shit and have been playing Rainbow Six Siege for the last four hours. But you know, most valuable player of the match, so. Anyway, headshots. Any gun in Siege is a one-shot kill to the head. That sounds so brutal when I say it, but it is realistic. I mean, any military grade weapon in the real world is a one-shot kill to the head. I guarantee someone in the comments will give me an overly engineered response to that statement, so if you'd like to prove me wrong, simply send me a video of you shooting yourself in the head and surviving, and I'll happily eat my words. But this one-shot headshot rule does make the game incredibly sweaty. Like the learning curve is steep, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There are players who know exactly where to aim their gun and just perfectly one tap you in the head before you've even seen them, it's pretty impressive. I mean in hindsight it's pretty impressive, but in the moment when someone kills me through a small tiny glory hole gap in the wall, I am less than complimentary of their tactics. It's mostly just me saying vulgar things about their mother, but in reality they're just a better player. I did start to get the hang of the game as I played more though. See here, I rappelled into a stairway. Repelling is actually the best way to avoid dying from falling off small ledges. It can look quite ridiculous sometimes when you're repelling down like a two metre ledge, but I'm not part of a SWAT team, so what do I know? Anyway, I found myself in a 1v3 situation and using some hardcore ADSing, I managed to spray down two enemies in quick succession. Oh, and a perfect segue. If any esports organizations are watching this video, I am looking for a pro team. My starting wage would be at least half a million a week and I I insist on being captain, so just send me an email with a contract and I'll sign it. But just an FYI, after like one year, I'll phase Tfue your ass and publicly call you out about how you manipulated me into signing the contract. It'll be epic, hit me up. Back to the play. So I've killed the first two and now it's a one versus one situation. And the last guy is hiding and time is almost up. So I have to plant the bomb diffuser to try and draw him out into the open. Well, I hear him come in and the dude tries to flex on me by walking up right behind me to give me a wet willy or something. But I managed to quickly turn and hip fire him for a reverse flex. I basically played a reversal card from Yuno on him. I've got to say though, I respect this guy a lot for having the courage to to at least try and pull off a funny play like that, though this was the match winning round, so he chose a strange time to showboat. Rainbow Six Siege has also seen itself become one of my favorite memes, where a defending operator looks at some inappropriate stuff on a mobile device, and then the FBI burst in, best I show you. You can put any image or video on the screen you like, perhaps the operator is texting an underage girl or watching some inappropriate anime. Anyway, it's the type of fun the whole family can enjoy. Wow, am I really explaining memes in a video? 
Now, geez, that's some top shelf quality content coming at you. Next meme. In seriousness though, I wish I'd started playing this game more seriously earlier in its life cycle, but to its credit, there is still a pretty massive community and player base. In fact, this game is often used as an example of how a live service game should be handled, and for good reason, it has so much free content. All too often these days, developers release games with a whole lot of promises attached to them of new maps and new guns, and then if the game isn't popular and no one is buying microtransactions, they just pull most of their developers and don't add much to the game at all. I actually think there's a lot of negativity in the gaming world right now, and sadly it's probably justified. It stems from developers being greedy or lazy and releasing unfinished games or trying to squeeze every last penny out of their customers. So sometimes it's nice just to sit back and enjoy a fully supported polished game like Siege, albeit it's really f***ing hard to get the hang of, but we'll get there. And for me anyway, the learning curve of mastering a new game is half the fun. But I swear to god, if I see you in a match, Potato Gamer 87 I'ma murder you so hard, son, and then teabag you so aggressively that my operator will need a double knee reconstruction after the match. But thanks for watching, you legends, and a massive thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel through Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.